Hi readers, we are live today from Simon & Schuster's Book Club Favorites. We are so excited to have viewers tuning in across both Facebook and YouTube to discuss September's Hi readers, we are live today from Simon & Schuster's Book Club Favorites. We are so excited to have viewers tuning in across both Facebook and YouTube. Yes. Okay. You can all hear me. Sorry about that. Uh, We are so excited to have viewers tuning in across both Facebook and YouTube to discuss September's book club pick, Magic Lessons by Alice Hoffman. We are joined today by Elizabeth Breeden, the Associate Marketing Director for Simon Books, an expert on all things Alice Hoffman, as well as the brilliant Mary Subrucci, who has just been recently named Vice President, Publisher, and Editor-in-Chief of her very own new imprint at Simon & Schuster, Mary Subrucci Books. And of course, by Alice Hoffman, the beloved author of the Practical Magic series, including this month's pick, Magic Lessons. Today, we are also giving away three titles from Alice Hoffman's Bewitching series. Five lucky winners will each receive a copy of today's discussion title, Magic Lessons, as well as Rules of Magic and her newest novel, The Book of Magic. To enter for a chance to win, please ask a question in the comment section of this video on either YouTube or Facebook, and we will try to answer as many comments as we can on screen today. And now I'll let everyone get started with the discussion. Before we begin, I just wanted to let everyone um, see a nice, beautiful trailer of Magic Lessons, um, and then we'll kind of flow into some nice discussion questions. So make sure to comment in the comment section. Oh, I love that so much. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I it never gets old when I see that trailer. <laughs> I know, I love it too. Uh, so um, Alice, so there are like, you get a little bit of a sense from, um, from that video trailer, but for anyone who is unfamiliar with um, the Magic Lesson story, could you introduce us to some of the key players that are in the book? Yeah, I, I kind of felt like crying when I was watching the video. <laughs> Um, it, it is a very emotional book, and it's really the origin story about the Owens family that began more than 25 years ago with practical magic. And this is going way back to the 17th century and Maria Owens, who's mentioned in the first book, but mentioned very briefly, but mentioned with enough detail so that I kind of knew what her life might be like. But for me, it was a real kind of a journey of discovery to find out where she came from, what happened to her and most importantly, how the Owens family curse was begun. Yes, could you um, also tell us a little bit about the curse and just for everyone who um, is, uh, again, I really hope that uh, people watching have had a chance to read um, some or all of the novels that have um, been within this series so far. But as you said, this is a prequel and you have another prequel to Practical Magic where you explore even more of that family. could you walk us through kind of like what is the chronology of the books in the series and could they, do you need to read all of them or can you read them all? uh, Could you read them like as standalone novels? Thank you. That's a really good question. And I get asked that a lot. I think they all can be read as standalone novels, but if you want to have kind of the total experience, um, you can read it two ways. You can read it in the order that they were published, which is practical magic. Um, which kind of takes place in modern times. And then the rules of magic, which takes place in the 1960s and 70s, my favorite time period in Greenwich Village in New York, my favorite place and time. And then um, it goes back to, and then the next one that is published is Magic Lessons, which is the 17th century. And then the book to come this October is called The Book of Magic, which is happening right now. But it really doesn't matter in which chronological direction you read them in. If you wanted to really start at the beginning of the Owens family story, you would start with magic lessons. And we've ordered them now so that they have numerals if you wanted to go in order. That's right? smart, yeah. Retailers, that helps. 
Yeah, I think it does help because, you know, the thing for me is I never expected it to be more than one book. I just wrote Practical Magic. It was felt like a gift to me because it just came to me. And then over the years, um, people kept writing to me, readers kept writing to me and saying that they wanted more about the family. They, they really wanted a sequel. But I, the more I thought about it, I really wanted a prequel because there were two characters in Practical Magic, these two old aunts or aunts, depending on how you say it, Franny and Jet. And I wanted to know what they were like as young girls and young women, because I always feel like you can't really know the people in your family ever really, because you didn't know them when they were young. And people are so extremely different when they're young. And so I wanted to go back in time and, and that's how I wrote the rules of magic. I, I love that um, for the rules of magic, you were exploring the lives of women that or characters that um, readers may have already been familiar with, but they knew them as someone in a, like an older generation. Yeah. And then you see their youth. And then for magic lessons, you kind of take an even bigger step back and look at the um, earlier generations for the family as a whole and kind of how that all started. Um, so we, I actually have a question for Mary Sue. Um, how did you feel when Mary, when uh, Alice uh, came to you and said, I think I want to write another prequel and I think it's going to be set in the 1600s? Oh, my, I mean, heaven. I was so thrilled uh, because I always wondered how the curse originated and who this Maria Owens was because she's, she's alluded to in in the other books as the matriarch, um, but we didn't know what had happened to her. And so her story in this book is just exquisite. I also love Salem. And I think anyone who's, you know, I mean, if you like, if you like history, the Salem witch trials that this weaves through the Salem witch trials as well. And it's just, it's really magnificent. I love it. I was thrilled. Right? That's Wasn't I thrilled, Alice? I think you were. I don't know. I, I kind of block everything out, but I think you were. <laughs> I think you were. And I know that you gave me great editing advice with this book and also with the rules of magic because it's so interesting when people think that a book, you just hand a book in and it's just published the way it is. I mean, maybe that is true for some people, but it's not true for me. And especially with the rules of magic, you know, it, it radically changed. I remember cutting a hundred pages and adding a hundred pages and, you know, it's kind of the growth of the book and it's really great for me to be able to work with such a great editor. Um, it's been a terrific experience. So thank you. <laughs> well, and back at you. So, uh, so and I, I just saw a comment from um, Raquel uh, about how she wants to go back and reread the other books after reading the prequel. Um, and I do think that that is one of those things. I was thinking that when we were watching the trailer, it's um, kind of a gift that keeps giving because you keep going back and finding Easter eggs and watching the trailer. I was thinking if people only saw this before reading the book, they'll get a whole other sense of meaning from everything if they watch it again. Um, but and that's also a good reminder to um, for everyone watching live. If you drop a comment um, in the chat below, then uh, you'll be entered for a chance to win. Um, a fantastic giveaway of all of the books in the series, um, or the uh, rules of magic, uh, match the rules of magic, magic lessons, and um, the book of magic, which is Alice's forthcoming um, novel. It's coming out in a couple of weeks, and it is so 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 exciting. Um, and we'll we'll have a couple more questions about that later on. Um, but I have another question about um, you know Salem and the 1600s and uh, the characters in magic lessons travel a lot. The novel opens um, in uh, rural England and then they go to the Dutch Indies and then you end up in Salem. Um, what was it like to do some of that research? How much research did you find you had to do? Because um, I mean, for me, when I was reading it, it all felt so real and vivid and uh, like you could really imagine yourself there with the characters. I did a ton of research. I, I usually do like an initial amount of research. Then I start to write because I don't want to get completely bogged down in the history. I want it to be a novel. Um, but I don't know if I'll ever do this much, much research. And it was really a lot. I, I didn't know where her story began, but it turned out it began in Essex, England. And the family ends up in Essex, Massachusetts. So it seemed only fitting that she went from one Essex county to another Essex county. And she took a route that many people took. She was an indentured servant 
And she, you know, she, so she came to the America through the West Indies. And while she was in the West Indies, um, it was very interesting for me because she met up with a bunch of um, Murano Jews. And I had written about this group of people before um, in the marriage of opposites, um, Jews who fled from Spain and Portugal. But what I discovered in my research for magic lessons was that so many of the navigators and explorers, but also the pirates were, were Jewish. And that was really interesting to me because there was no, literally no country they could go to so that they lived on, on the sea. So she meets someone while she's in St. Thomas who came as a complete surprise to me that was not part of my plotting out the novel. It completely changed her life and the book. And um, uh, and also the, the whole her whole idea about the curse because um, if we talk about that for a little bit, you know, there's a family curse. And I always feel that for a lot of families, people feel like there's a family, if not a curse, but like a legacy mm -hmm. that's handed down through the generations. And sometimes you don't even know why. I mean, you don't have to have had the trauma to have it handed down to you by other people. And I knew from the beginning when I wrote uh, Practical Magic, Maria Owens was involved with um, John Hawthorne, who was a relative of Nathan, the author Nathaniel Hawthorne, who was a horrible, um, horrible guy, and, and that kind of one of the head uh, witch finders. He was one of the judges in the Salem witch trials, and the only one who never asked for forgiveness for what he had done. So I knew she was going to wind up with him, and um, the curse really comes from that relationship. And um, she she puts the, this curse on her family so that they won't be hurt in love. But that also means that they can't experience love without consequences. And so really the whole series is, is kind of an exploration of the curse and how do you break a curse like that, a family curse like that. Yeah. Um, and it is really, I just realized that for the other books in the series, it's all the characters um, living with the consequences of the curse and for the I for all the characters um, up until she kind of invokes this what she sees as protection, um, right. you know, Maria doesn't she she doesn't live under the curse. It's all her own agency. Right. She thinks she's protecting everyone. By the way, if you hear heavy breathing, my dog just came up. So <laughs> it's my dog Shelby. Yeah, she thinks she's protecting her family, but in fact, she's not because anyone who who falls in love with them meets with a terrible fate. And so, you know, it's all a process of trying to unbreak their legacy. Well, so let's, um, that actually brings us to another uh, question um, about love in the novel and how there are so many different kinds of love and different relationships um, with between the characters. You have kind of more of a, a maternal relationship between Hannah and Maria. Um, you have, uh, you know, passionate love affairs. You have um, uh, other more like um, familial um, uh, love. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about why it was important to have all those different um, representations? Yeah, you know, I I think one of the reasons that Practical Magic has, and the whole series have, has gotten more popular, not less popular. And this I think is also really true for the movie version of Practical Magic, which is a terrific kind of, all women cast of Sandra Bullock and and um, Nicole Kidman and Diane Weist and Stockard Channing and um, just a whole, I can't even name all of the great women in it because it's really about relationships between women. I mean, it's a love story and there are love affairs involved, but it's really about um, the relationships between sisters, very much so, um, the relationships between mothers and daughters and the relationships between aunts and, and um, nephews and nieces and how important these relationships are. And for me, I think personally, it's been really great because I don't have a sister and I don't have a daughter. So it was a way for me, writing these books was a way for me to kind of experience that um, uh, sort of love that I think is so important in people's lives. And uh, we actually have a question um, from uh, YouTube, one of our YouTube viewers, um, from Burning Sword 07. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that's a, that's a username and not uh, your given name. Um, <laughs> but she, um, she or he would like to know um, which Owens witch did you connect with the most? 
Well, you know, it's funny. When the first book was published, I think people either felt they were Sally or Jillian because Sally and Jillian are complete opposites in, in, at the beginning. And, you know, they compare, they're compared to like the sun and the moon. They're just complete opposites. So I think people felt like, oh, I'm Sally. You know, I'm someone, I, I'm a mother, I'm motherly. I have, you know, I'm doing anything to protect my children or I'm Jillian. I want to have a great time. I, you know, I'm not really thinking about consequences. So I think at that time I felt like I was more like Sally. But as time has gone on, um, the I, I also really love this character, Vincent, who's, who's Franny and Jet's brother, who was completely, he just walked into the book and made himself comfortable and just kind of took over. I, I, you know, I fell in love with him. But I think the character that I most relate to is Franny, who is very difficult and crotchety and, um, you know, seems very distant, but has a very open heart that, and who is wounded very easily. So I think for me now, I, I mostly relate to Franny. But I think depending on where you are in your life, it's kind of the different stages of being a woman in a way you relate to different characters at different times in your life when you read the books. Yeah, I had a, um, a professor in college who would reread Middlemarch every year. And because he found that at every new reading, he found himself in a different character. And he's just like with some stories and some some writers, they are able to capture so many different kinds of experiences, and it gives the reader even more to uh, to to enjoy as they as they go through it. I, I totally think that. I always think that about Wuthering Heights, which is my favorite novel. And I always think, you know, in terms of Heathcliff, you read the book when you're 17, you think, oh, Heathcliff is this great romantic hero, and then you read it when you're 30, and you think, oh, Heathcliff, he's a psychotic. <laughs> <laughs> and when you read it when you're a little bit older, you think Heathcliff is very complicated. Yeah. You know, it just changes every time you read it. Now, I love that you tackled this whole family in this way because we look at them, the prism is one way in one book, and then you look at them again and in the in the next book, and it's it's different. The reality has shifted a little bit. So we shift as a reader, but your characters shift too. So you you're building out these stories about all of them through the series, which I love. Yeah. Thank you. I, I think for me, it was so much fun that I had this big canvas to kind of explore things that usually in a novel, you don't have that much time to explore all these different elements within a family in these different time periods. Uh, I would actually love to get uh, Mary Sue, your favorite, or who who do you see yourself in the most for the Owens, um, which Owens character? Well, um, and then after that, I would love to have our team um, show the video trailer for Alice's next book, um, which features uh, Franny and Vincent, um, the two characters that Alice brought up before. But Mary Sue, I'll let you answer first. I mean, I'm going to sound like a copycat, but I feel like Franny too. I feel like I'm somewhat misunderstood. I'm a little bit hard and yet I have this mushy heart and I have good intentions, but I can piss people off. Yeah. So I, I mean, I, she, I totally, she's my animal spirit, spirit animal. Yeah. That's totally. Yeah. I feel the same. It's probably why we get along so well, Alice. <laughs> I'm very surprised you said Fran. <laughs> really? Who do you think I was going to say? I think that's Sally, maybe. No. No. Okay, I get it. I, I mean, yes, Sally, a little bit. Yeah, I understand you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I, I feel like, I don't know, feisty. Yeah. Well, that's and there are so many other, um, you know, uh, the even the next generation um, is, yeah. is featured in um, the Book of Magic. And so there are even more um, individuals to kind of parse through and, and choose from. Um, but actually, on that note, I'm going to throw it over to um, our team to, to play the trailer if it's ready. I feel like crying. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's it is it's a nice world to be in. 
You know, and uh, for re readers um, or viewers watching, it's hard to see in the um, in the jacket mock up there. Uh, but the jacket for the Book of Magic has a really wonderful quote from Matt Haig. And um, Matt Haig is the author of uh, The Midnight Library. And he is another author that has, um, you know, the ability to weave in a bunch of different genres and, you know, incorporate magical realism with um, an emphasis on relationships and emotional journeys. Um, and they, we actually have a, a question from Christine um, in the chat that says, uh, the series crosses a few genres. It's a little romance, it's a lot of historical fiction and a bit fantasy. How hard is it to write across genres? I think that's a very interesting question because I sort of don't believe in genres. I think they're a construct that have, has to do more with sales or with kind of putting people in a certain box. And I just think, you know, literature is literature. And like, you know, if I, I happen to really like time travel myself. So, you know, for me, it, it, it's just literature. And I don't really think of it in terms of, you know, whether it's fantasy or whether it's historical fiction. Um, I think you can think of it in those terms. There's nothing wrong with that. But I just, you know, I just feel, you know, writing is the one place where I feel free to do whatever I want to do. So, you know, this is what comes out. It's kind of a mashup of everything. I love all the books that I love. I think that's, I mean, that, that's why so many people <laughs> have loved, have loved your books over the years is because they often incorporate all of these different things that are, you know, different genres, um, but elements that um, appeal to every different kind of reader. Um, and to your point, I feel like some people think, oh, I don't like magical realism. And then they read your book and say, oh, I love that book. Oh, <laughs> so maybe I do. So we, we have these, um, you know, we have the propensity to, to say, I like only X, but actually it's maybe because you haven't been exposed to Y, you know? I think so too, Marcy, because I also, I also feel that literature is magic. And I feel like the I original agree. literature, it's fairy tales, folk tales, myth. I mean, that is what literature is all about and realism kind of came in and okay, fine, I like it. But it to me, it's not kind of the beginning, the heart of literature. I think of it more as, you know, the stories that, that you know, grandmothers told their grandchildren by the fireside, you know, that to me is the beginning of literature. And there's very often, you know, magic involved. And the magic, you know, it, when you read it, it, it's somewhat symbolic sometimes, right? You know, it's for the power that you have. It might not be, you know, for seeing auras, but it might be for seeing who's a liar and who's not, or, you know, something along those lines. Yes, I love that. Power of forgiveness, power of love. Exactly. Yes. Um, well, this is, uh, we have a lot of questions coming in about magic um, from everyone watching. And just again, a reminder for people, um, if you are watching live, uh, drop a question in the chat and you'll be entered for a chance to win um, a copy of Magic Lessons, Rules of Magic, and um, Alice's next book, The Book of Magic. Um, and there, so we have a couple questions about magic and research. And, um, but I, I do think that there's such a beautiful, uh, blending of kind of appreciation for everyday moments that are magical, like love and comfort and forgiveness, like Mary Sue said. Um, but then there are actual, um, you know, spells and, and potions and courage tea and liberty tea. Uh, how did you how did you do research into some of those um, uh, those details? Well, I do. I have a magic library. So I kind of collect books about magic. Some of them, I don't even know where I've gotten them from. So, you know, everything that's in there that's magical is, you know, true to, to some extent or another. Um, so I did a lot of magical research, but I think it is really true that some of the most magical moments are these moments where two sisters go swimming together or a brother and sister are walking together in Paris. Those to me are in some ways the most magical moments. Well, and um, there are scenes in Paris in the next novel, and this is actually our last question, um, but uh, there's a question that is, what is going on with the Owens family in the Book of Magic? What do we have to look forward to? <laughs> I already well, gave it away with Paris a little bit, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they do, you know, it, they, are, they do travel to Paris, but um, I felt like I wanted closure with the family, and I also felt like they deserve closure. You know, it, it doesn't mean that some of their lives won't go on necessarily, the characters that remain, but I just felt like 
as readers, we needed to know kind of what happened. And I feel like the Book of Magic does that. It, it is very involved with the next generation, Kylie and Antonia, who are Sally's daughters. And it's um, very much about breaking up the curse. And in order to do that, um, they have to go both to Paris and then to London and then to Essex, which is where Maria Owens originally came from. It's kind of like to end, to end it, they have to go back to the beginning. It's so good. Thank you. <laughs> and I love, I love that um, Cheryl just left a comment that said literature is magic. Perfectly said. Yeah. Oh, thank you. So I really true. believe that. I mean, it has been in my life, and and you know, for me, especially now during this time, it was such an escape to write this book, and um, and I hope it will be to read it. I I, I think it's about real life and I think it connects with our real lives, but it's also like you go into a different world. And for me, that's always what a novel is about. You want to enter into a different world and then take something back to your own world. Yeah, I agree. Um, well, and for everyone watching, um, please check out uh, Magic Lessons if you haven't yet. Uh, Rules of Magic is available, um, Practical Magic, and uh, hopefully you'll also put it in a, in a call to your uh, local bookstore and order a copy of the Book of Magic. will be out in October. Um, and I'm going to throw it back over to Holly um, to close this out. Oh, Holly, I think you're muted. Hi, can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for this discussion. It was so beautiful. I truly agree. Um, this this book, Magic Lessons, was uh, literature is totally magic and it's definitely portrayed mm -hmm. in this story. So thank you so much, Alice. Um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to remind everyone one last time to keep dropping some questions in the, in the comment section below and you'll still be entered to win our giveaway of Rules of Magic, Magic Lessons, and Alice's new book, The Book of Magic. Um, so just be sure to ask a question in the comment section and we'll pull a winner at the end of the month. Um, and I also wanted to mention that our next book club favorites discussion title will be Cloud Cuckoo Land by Anthony Dewar. Um, so keep your eyes peeled. We will be discussing with Anthony on November 2nd at 12 p.m. Eastern time, also on Facebook and YouTube. So thank you so much, Alice and Mary Sue and Elizabeth. This discussion has been so beautiful. And I know all of our viewers were so excited to talk about um, this bewitching series. So thank you again. Um, we had such a great time together. And until next time, thanks everyone for viewing. Thank you. Thank you.